of researchers rush to develop vaccines and therapeutics to prevent or treat vector-borne diseases like Zika, Chikungunya and Malaria, classic methods to control mosquitoes remain our best strategy to reduce the burden of all these diseases. Many of these methods already exist, but thoughtful design and implementation can improve their success. Malaria can infect anyone, it doesn't matter who you are. Be it Alexander the Great, Shanghai Khan, to come some of the great men who have been affected by vector-borne diseases. Coming to vector-borne diseases, greater than 80% of the world's population is at risk from at least one vector-borne disease. Vector-borne diseases account for 17% of the global burden of all infectious diseases and cause nearly 500,000 deaths annually. What is integrated vector management? Integrated vector management is defined as a rational decision-making process for the optimal use of resources for vector control. The approach seeks to improve efficacy, cost effectiveness, ecological soundness, and sustainability of disease vector control. The ultimate goal is to prevent the transmission of vector-borne diseases such as malaria, dengue, Japanese encephalitis, leishmaniasis, schistosomiasis and Chagas disease. What is the I in integrated vector management? The term integrated, that is the I, can stand for several things. First of all, the integration can refer to the integration of tools that are used for disease control. That is, the chemical and non-chemical vectors are used in combination wherever possible. Another example is vector control tools that attack adults, larvae and immature vectors are used in combination wherever possible. Secondly, integration can also refer to integration within the health sector and across sectors. Within the health sector, resources are shared for planning, surveillance, delivery, monitoring and evaluations of interventions. And outside the health sector, integration can refer to integration among communities, private sectors, ministries and the health department for implementations of such interventions. What are the five key elements in integrated vector management? First one is integrated approach. As we said, it is the integration of, it can stand for a number of things, including the integration of non-chemical and chemical vectors or other disease control measures. Collaboration within the health sectors and other sectors for optimal use of resources, planning, monitoring and decision making. Evidence-based decision making, that is, decision makings are backed by proper researches, planning, surveillance and evaluations. Capacity building implies adequate human resources tra are trained and structured at national and local level to promote capacity building. Advocacy, social mobilization and legislation are regulatory controls for the public health and empowerment of the communities. Coming to the vectors that are the main aim in the integrated vector management in India, that is in National Vector Bone Disease Control Program, include Enophilus for malaria, for filariasis, aid is for chikungunya, for dengue and for filariasis, Culex for Japanese encephalitis, filariasis, Mansonia for filariasis, Sandfly for Kalwasar. The components of integrated vector management can be generally said 
to include six different measures. The first one is environmental measures, chemical controls, biological control, personal profile access methods, health education, and genetic control. Genetic control is comparatively a new way or a new component of integrated vector control. Environmental management. Environmental management seeks to change the environment in order to prevent or minimize vector propagation and human contact with vector pathogen by destroying or altering or removing or recycling non-essential containers that provide habitats for egg larvae or pupae. Such actions should be the mainstay of dengue vector control because they are cheap, efficient and bring out very excellent results. Types of environmental management are of two types. First one is environmental modification. Environmental modification is a permanent change that is brought about or a long lasting transformation. It seeks to examples include a reliable piped water supply to communities including household connections. This reduces stagnation of water. Another thing is environmental manipulation. It is a temporary change to vector habitats involving the management of containers, emptying, cleaning of water storage vessels, uh, flower vases, coolers, etc. Chemical control. Chemical control includes larvicides and adulticides. Larvicides are chemicals that are designed to be applied directly to water to control mosquito larvae. Whereas adulticides are used in fogging and spraying to control adult mosquitoes. As we can see from the name itself, larvicides are for larvae, adulticides are for adult mosquitoes. Larvicides are applied to water, whereas adulticides are used as fogs or sprays to control adults. That's because adults are seen in the air and larvae are seen in the water. So that, that, that satisfies the question. Larvicides includes, types of larvicides include oiling, use of abate and fenthion. Oil acts as a thin layer over the water, thereby preventing the larvae from coming out and in that process killing it. it. Abates are used in artificial water reservoirs and domestic water containers which is used for drinking. Fentheon is also another type of larvicides. Larvicides, they are chemicals, so we have to use it in a restricted manner. They are supposed to be used only complementary to environmental management, as we said before. Adulticides are for adult mos mosquitoes, so they are sprayed into the atmosphere. The main application of adulticides is in the form of indoor residual spraying, that is, Spraying of insecticides onto the walls and roofs of homes. Chemicals that are used include DDT, BHC, that is beta hexochlorohexane, malathion, and delta methrine. Coming to space sprays, space sprays are adulticides which are in the form of fogs or aerosols. Chemicals that used in space sprays include pyrethrum extract, technical malathion, and delta methrin. These are done near hospitals and whenever there is an outbreak of epidemics. Biological control. Biological control is basically the introduction of organisms that prey upon, parasitize, compete with or otherwise reduce populations of the target species. Against Aedes mosquito or any kind of mosquitoes, a variety of larvivorous fish species and copepods are available and they are effective as well. Species include Gambusia, Guppy, Bacillus thuringiensis, bio and other biolarvicides includes fungi, nematodes, etc. BT are available as powders or granules which contains the bacteria, spores or toxic crystals 
and they produce an endotoxin which after in the ingestion by the bacteria uh, by the mosquito can cause gut paralysis and leakage of contents into the body cavity ultimately resulting in the death of the mosquito personal prophylaxis personal prophylaxis includes mosquito nets they can be normal mosquito nets as well as insecticide treated bed nets coming to mosquito nets there are certain regulations the size of the opening in the net should not exceed or it should be less than 0 the mosquito net should be less than 0 0.0475 inch or the number of holes in one square inch should be 150 other methods include mosquito repellents uh, coils or mosquito squatters and vaporizers. Genetic method or genetic control of mosquitoes include sterile male technique, cytoplasmic incompatibility, chromosomal translocation, sex distortion and gene replacements. Thank you.